Do you guys remember back in the day when SoundCloud rap was first becoming popular? Back in like 2016, 2017, the golden age of SoundCloud as they call it. You know, someone like Lil Pump gets popular, X gets popular, and all of a sudden there was just this huge wave of people that all started trying to become SoundCloud rappers. Next thing you know, you wake up one morning, look out your window, and there's eight wannabe SoundCloud rappers roaming the streets with neon hair, wearing fake Supreme. I mean, it was almost an infestation at one point. They had their own food pyramid, and everything. Or have you ever personally known someone that tried to become a SoundCloud rapper? They probably thought they were amazing. It's like the first time they ever tried making music, so of course they were trash. Because whoever you have in mind, I got a guy that probably makes your guy look like Drake with how awful he was. So I'll get to his story in a second, but I probably couldn't even tell you how many times between like 2016 to 2018, I was asked to either follow somebody's SoundCloud or like their SoundCloud song. One time I was walking down the street, someone tapped me on the shoulder, I thought he was going to ask for some spare change, instead he asked me to follow his SoundCloud. I mean, things have died down nowadays here in 2022, but I remember back in the day, 2016, you walk outside, you either ran into an aspiring SoundCloud rapper or a killer clown if you remember those. Either that or someone that looked lost playing Pokemon Go. I remember you'd see that too, all of those things. Hey, it was wild times, man. It was like the damn Wild West back then. But anyways, I'm sure a lot of you guys at one point or another knew at least one person or at least knew of a person who really leaned into the whole SoundCloud rapper thing. You know, someone who called themselves Young Meatloaf, say skirt and yuh 27 times in one song and then wonder why their song didn't blow up. Hitting the studio basically meant sitting on their couch with an iPhone. Someone who swore swore they were the next big thing and then they play you their song and they play this hey bro did you guys hear my new song yet uh nah i didn't get a chance to listen what no then i gotta play it for you right now i think it's only a matter of time before this blows up to tell you the truth let me know what you think i'm the one preach y'all chill then vacate the tabernacle what's the beast to a dinosaur pterodactyl mixed with a t-rex t rex Bruh. if someone used to hit you with the Hey bro, can you follow me on SoundCloud real quick? 90% of the time, it was either someone trying to be a clone of Lil Pump or whoever else was hot, or if it wasn't that, then it was full on emo mode. Because there was no uniqueness, there was no variety. It seemed like everybody was making the same two songs. And no matter which of the two it was, you could always count on them just drenching the song in autotune. Got themselves making music that sounds like Siri would enjoy. And it's a shame because there were actually some people who would surprise you, make actually pretty pretty good songs, but they were all overshadowed by some guy who started an emo SoundCloud page because the girl he met a week ago left him, you ask him for a ride home, he's gonna play his new song for you like, you know, I've just really been going through it lately, I had to let it all out in this song, let me know what you think. Remember the times we had, the times that you and me had, remember the times we had, the times that you and me had. Oh, uh, oh yeah, bro, That that's gas, but without the G. Can we go home now? And I really feel like a lot of these trash SoundCloud rappers were all enabled by Genius. And look up the YouTube channel if you don't know what it is. But Genius was the one promoting this type of behavior. They would take a song where the chorus is like, I be dripping Gucci times 10 and then have the artist do a lyric breakdown explanation of that like we couldn't get it on our own and then everybody sees that and says what this man got rich doing that yeah let me try although i will say the other thing about genius is it exposed who was being absolutely carried by autotune they try to sing their song in real life on genius barely even sounds like the same song like my boy went from this you could be sad Baby, I'm alone, yeah. you could be okay, okay, not bad, not bad. I wonder what he sounds like in his genius interview. Yeah, you could be mad, cause baby, I'm a loner. Yeah, you could be sad, cause baby, I'm a loner. Yeah. Alright, that's enough. I mean, at a certain point, it just felt like it was a competition to see who could go on Genius and be worse. Like, I'll never forget when the Backpack Kid went on Genius and did this. I be flossing. I be flossing. I be flossing. 
I be flossing. Hey, he had a little tone variation on that last one though. But yeah, I'm so glad they got him on the show to explain those lines to us. And the thing that used to get me was the names that some of these SoundCloud rappers would be choosing. For example, I knew this guy from the restaurant I used to work at. He started a SoundCloud page and called himself Lil Treat. And I thought that was a bad name. That wasn't even the worst name among the people at our restaurant. Because this other kid we worked with named himself Rabbi Slim Thought. And this guy might have potentially been the worst SoundCloud rapper of all time. And SoundCloud rappers were such an infestation that this isn't even the only SoundCloud rapper story I have related to this restaurant alone. So before I tell you about him, I got another story about another guy. And this takes place a couple months before Rabbi Slim Thought popped onto the scene. And I was working one night and the restaurant was packed on this particular night. And the reason it was so packed was because the restaurant was right across the street from this giant high school and on nights there were sports games, everyone would be going to eat there after the game. So there was a football game on this particular night, and after it ended, people were just flooding in. There were legitimately at least a couple hundred people between the inside and outside, lines going out the door, crowds of people in the parking lot, music blasting from cars, people are like racing through the parking lot, chaos levels off the charts, right? There's zero room to move around anywhere on the inside. People are leaned up against the walls eating their food because there was nowhere else to sit. It wasn't even the atmosphere of a restaurant anymore. They had turned it into the atmosphere of like a nightclub. Someone's dancing on top of a table, blowing vape clouds into the air. Straight chaos, right? And back in the kitchen, it was equally chaotic. I mean, there's like 10 of us packed back there in that small kitchen, all trying to do like 18 things at once. So I'm back there working, making orders, and I notice through the window, in the middle of this crowd, there's this dude in a red tracksuit trying to make his way through everyone to the front. He's got gold chains around his neck. It was like 10 p.m. at night, but my guy still had shades on. And following right behind him, there was a guy in an all-white tracksuit, also had shades on, and they're both pushing and shoving their way through the crowd. And I knew something was about to happen when I saw white tracksuit pull out his phone and start recording red tracksuit. And sure enough, Red Tracksuit hops up onto the front counter, starts waving his hands around trying to get everyone's attention, and then he starts yelling. He's like, attention everyone, check me out on SoundCloud, listen to my music, and just continues talking about his SoundCloud music for maybe another 20 seconds or so. And nobody really tried to stop him or anything because there was just so much else going on. This was just like one of 18 other things going on at the same time. He just blended in. And so then he pulls this fat wad of cash out of his pocket and just starts throwing dollars, getting everyone all hyped up, just making it rain in this overcrowded fast food restaurant. People are all cheering him on. He's standing up there throwing stack after stack of cash. It was no small amount of money. And I'm watching this from the back, back in the kitchen, and I see everybody, customers and employees alike, scrambling to pick up this money as much as they could. And then he hops off the counter, walks behind it, you know, where all the employees are supposed to be, and walks right up to the window going through to the kitchen. And he points to us and says, hey, all you cooks in the back, I appreciate all of you too. And just starts throwing more money back into the kitchen. Bills are landing on greasy floors, the order making stations. One landed on somebody's order of fries. But this time, instead of dollar bills like he was throwing up front, he was throwing 20s back there. $20 bills, one after another. So I won't lie, we were back there in that hot, greasy kitchen, fiending for those bills. I said earlier how many of us were back there that night. We all couldn't have cared less about all this food we were supposed to be making. And all of a sudden, everyone is just rushing to pick up this money. We're on the greasy floors, piling on top of each other. People are running through the kitchen, slipping on grease, trying to get some of this money before it's all gone. Now, I happened to be right there by the window when he started throwing the money. So I remember picking up 420s right away, and as I tried to reach for a fifth, I got like body checked out of the way into a trash can. It was straight chaos back there, I'm telling you. And I could only imagine the chaos going on up front with all of those people. Hey, it was interesting, that's for sure. I mean, I made more money that night from a SoundCloud rapper than I did from my actual job. So shout out to Red Tracksuit for making an already overly chaotic situation even worse. And I do remember somebody else showed me his music later that night. And I gotta be honest, I don't know where this man got all that money from, but there's no way it was from his music because it was not good. And as bad as his music was, it still wasn't as bad as one of my other co-workers from that restaurant. And this guy, you know, this is a guy who should no doubt be in the discussion of one of the worst SoundCloud rappers of all time. And we'll call this guy Nick. And the first thing you need to know about Nick 
is he had absolutely zero musical talent and zero musical experience. But everyone's gotta start somewhere, right? And Nick decided to start by trying to become a SoundCloud rapper. So he walks into work one day and starts telling me and all our other co-workers about how he was working on his debut song and he thinks he can make it big. And this was when Lil Pump, that type of genre was blowing up and becoming super popular. So he probably thought he was gonna make the same type of song and also be successful with it. One day at work, he made us all follow him before he even released his song, and I look at his profile, and his rap name was Rabbi Slim Thought, but the S was a dollar sign, so I don't think you could pick a worse name if you tried. And he just kept on hyping up this song he was working on for probably a few weeks, saying he's gonna play it over the speakers at work, soon the whole country's gonna know his name. He'd get off his shift at like 10pm, he'd be like, now My day's work is only halfway over, now it's time to hit the studio. And by studio, we all know he meant his bedroom closet. He would tell us that he's gonna release it tomorrow, and then tomorrow would come, and he'd say he needed more time. And he did that like six times. But, I gotta give him at least a little bit of credit, because the day finally came when he released the song, and on that day, the man himself, Rabbi Slim Thought, in the flesh, walks into work, he's all excited, talking about his new song, telling everybody to go check it out. Eventually, he walks up to me in the kitchen, and he asks me, he's like, Hey bro, could you listen to my song and give me some feedback on it? And it was pretty loud in the kitchen, right? So he wants us to go back into the freezer where it's quiet so we could actually hear it. So we get into the freezer and he opens up his SoundCloud and my expectations were already set low. I mean, come on now, I can't be expecting some musical masterpiece coming from a man named Rabbi Slim Thought. So we get in there and he presses play and he's like, I already hit 50 plays, let me know what you think. Yeah, it's Rabbi Slim Thought. What you thought, uh? I shoot at ops. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah, they told me to rap. I just needed push. I tell her she's ugly. I don't beat around the bush. Hey, uh, just stop the song real quick, bro. Bro, you paused it on the best part. Hold on, hold on. Uh, I pulled on push. I push P like Gunna. Uh, I do this and I really stun her. Uh, yeah, I want to have Bruce Jenner's baby. I go in beast mode, they think I go rabies. I'm just talking about rats. Psych. I'm with my dog. Roof, 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 roof. Yeah. They said I'm the goat, but I'm like a cow. They don't want beef because my gun go bow, bow, bow. Yeah, I got more clips like Regal. I be fly just like a seagull. Meant to say I got bread. I can leave you dead. It's Slim Thought Rap. Oh, wait, I said my name wrong. It's Rabbi Slim Thought. I shoot at ops. And I remember listening to it there in the freezer, and it was actually awful. I think the worst song, SoundCloud or not, I've ever heard in my life, ever. Bro went triple aluminum with this one. Bro went certified cardboard after that release. He told me he's like, Tell me I'm not making it out the hood with this one, bro. I was like, well, maybe, but it'll be because they kicked you out. So I told him, I gotta be honest with you, bro. You need to go back to the drawing board with this one. And he's like, nah, you just want opinion, bro. I need to see what other people think about it. And then he leaves the freezer. And we had this other guy we worked with, we'll call him Max, who coincidentally had just installed a brand new sound system in his car earlier that same day. And he had been talking about this sound system for weeks. I think he was as excited to get his new sound system as Nick was to release his new song. So when Nick found out he just got a brand new sound system installed in his car, it was like a perfect match. He's like, yo Max, when we go on break later, we need to listen to my brand new song on your brand new speakers. And Max knew that Nick wasn't going to take no for an answer. So he's like, all right, you know what? Fine, we, we can do that later. So eventually, they leave on break together, and about 30 minutes later, they get back. Max comes rolling back in, but this man looked pissed for some reason. And Nick was walking behind him, looking kind of quiet, not really saying much. And there was like this tension between them. And I'm thinking like, I know the song was bad, but how bad could listening to one bad song have gone? And I guess the answer was really bad, because apparently, what had happened was, they were on their break in Max's car, bumping Nick's new song over the brand new speakers. You know, the ones that Max had just installed earlier that day. And at one point, Nick was like, Oh shoot, we gotta turn it up for this part right here. And then there was a loud pop and a crackle from the back right side of the car. They both look back, and then they look at each other for a second. Hey, bro, it kind of sounded like one of your speakers blew up. I don't know if- Stop talking and get out of my car. 
Apparently, one of his brand new speakers had blown out while they were listening to his song, and Max was not happy about it. The whole rest of the shift, they're fighting back and forth. Max would be like, I was playing music through those speakers all day, and only when I listened to your song did my speakers blow out. Nick is like, nah man, you just put the speakers in wrong. My song is not even that bad. So whether it was coincidence, maybe the song was mixed so badly that something in the beat and the volume it was at was the perfect combination to blow out a speaker, maybe Max installed something wrong, Hey, we'll never know, but he never let Nick hear the end of it. He'd be like, imagine being so trash that your music blows out somebody's brand new speakers. And I gotta agree with him. I think that's only something someone named Rabbi Slim thought could manage to do. And then after that whole incident, I remember Nick talking about how his second song was gonna be about a shoe that doesn't quite fit right. I had no idea what that was supposed to mean, but he never did end up releasing that one. So the SoundCloud career of Rabbi Slim Thought started and ended with his one and only song blowing out somebody's brand new speakers. And then he deleted his whole profile shortly after. And the world never got a chance to hear about a shoe that doesn't quite fit right, whatever that's supposed to mean. And his one and only song is lost and gone forever. But that's probably for the better. Oh, I pull don't push. I push P like gonna. Oh, I do this and I really stunner. Oh, yeah. I want to have Bruce Jenner's baby.